guys or good morning it's actually like 11 o'clock 11 p.m here on wednesday and i was thinking um i saw that kansas uh kept their abortions legal in their state which was amazing i hope you can hear me some people say they can't hear me but when i watch other devices or my phone or my laptop or my tv i can hear me just fine um but it and, and that's fantastic do you know that they have not voted on a republic or a democratic bill or democrat or anything else in 50 years um and that really made me realize that we really are in the throes of a shift you know we talk about that all the time a shift is not you're going from here to there it's not a physical going someplace it is actually a mindset a belief set of getting rid of uh, you know beliefs that don't serve you anymore i could imagine the people there whether they were republican or democrats really felt like i want my daughter or my granddaughter to have an option above politics and that's a shift that's really a shift we, if that state gave us an example of people over politics something that our elected officials can't seem to do um we often decide you know am i going to go blue am i going to go red we categorize people by the melanin in their skin or their body weight or what part of the country or the world that they live in or their economic status um yeah or their celebrity status and people are just people and so to see them make that move i, I was impressed by that um i haven't been to kansas i don't know a lot about kansas other than what i just told you but to see that um they reject the abortion amendment and that didn't take just the democrats everyone had to major majority of people had to come into agreement with that that's the shift the shift is a change of mindset the shift has to be us that says you know i'm not so obsessed about this party or that party or no party or whatever it's about we as human beings coming together to make a difference that is the lesson that we're learning we have powers that be like Koch family and people above that who put Trump in in order to have divisiveness and even they don't support him in fact in fact Rupert Murdoch when they did that speech and it Biden uh, not Biden but Pence did his and Trump did his do you know that Fox News showed 17 minutes of Pence doing his speech and zero minutes to Trump because Murdoch has turned his back on him he doesn't understand that he was a pawn you know how somebody is a pawn and everybody else knows the secret of it but they never know they think that they legitimately have the power and the this and that and they don't of course they have a few flunkies that are going to believe that they are that person but he was never that person but he served a job and it was to divide the country and to help you know put the economy in a hole that now we've got Biden struggling to help us get out of it and other people in government as well. But I like the fact that people came together with this notion of what we're not going to do is tell my wife or my daughter or my granddaughter or my niece or whoever what they can do with their body, regardless of party. And if we could really look like that as a collective, which I know that is asking a lot <laughs> for any for uh, for us but it's i'm just saying if we could look at life collectively like that like is this good for us is that good for this oh they want to have gas extra high we won't buy it we'll we'll boycott it or they want groceries sky high we won't buy it we'll you know go to our neighbors and act like we did long time ago when we would barter for things and how if somebody needed gas you would used to be even in the 70s if you remember that when the gas prices went high that you would siphon gas out of somebody's to help give them gas out of your tank to give them gas you know those type of things where we were a community 
we had a country that was a community. There were uh, events to help raise rent. There were barbecues and block parties. I remember growing up, they'd have a block party in a minute on our block. <clears throat> and they'd have raffle tickets and, you know, someone could win some little gifts and little games and things like that. And it was money collected to somebody else that needed it on the block. That wasn't, you know, I mean, that was 60s. I don't think that's that long ago. But I guess somebody probably does. But that it, that really was happening. I think one of the things is that it's us having to say, I appreciate me. I'm a woman of color. And that's great. And that's fantastic. And I don't have to compare myself to this person or that person. I can be great. And you can be great and you can be great and you can be great and that we can just move forward in our own personal greatness rather than looking at what's wrong with this one. And then we get this decision because we see this person acting like a Karen or this person acting ghetto or whatever. And then we generalize it over everybody. No, it's not everybody. It's that person. It's that person. Um, and that person probably needs a lot of help more so than maybe jail could give. Um, but they probably need that too. I don't know. I'm just rambling. But it just really impressed me that they did that. What I'm looking at though, <coughs> excuse me, is will we have a blue wave again in November? Um, we had some primaries last night and uh, a lot of them. And there were some people that Trump had endorsed I think he endorsed like 42 people and some of them won and some of them did not. Some of them are not even qualified. Like Herschel Walker comes to mind. He is one of the most uneducated men I've ever, you know, been exposed to via TV. I don't know him, but, you know, he was an athlete. Oftentimes athletes get to go to school they don't have to work to the grades that you and I would have. They've got tutors and they've got people watching out for them so they can go to, you know, pro level without getting an adequate education, without even able to read appropriately or read with understanding or knowledge. And he reminds me of that. And yet he's Trump endorsed. And I think he won his primary, I do believe. Uh, it was him and Warnock, I believe, but... Anyways, um, in terms of a blue wave, yeah, I do see that. I see people, and I'm looking at my cards, if you see me looking down, deciding I'm going to go in a different direction. I'm going to go in a different direction. I don't like what's happening. I don't like how certain states are coming up with some crazy bills and making them into laws, you know. We can't have critical race theory in, in uh, lower education. It never was there to begin with. So why did you even make a stink out of it? It's not there. That's a, a law course in college if you choose to be a lawyer. Um, you had uh, states banning and burning books. What is this, the, the 1700s? Are we banning books? Are we burning books? That's utterly, utterly ridiculous. This is what makes kids, some of these young people come out here and do some of these wild things they do, the oppression that you're putting on them, but thinking that you're doing the right them, thing for them. They come through you, but they're not you. They need the opportunity to be able to read and discover all aspects of the world and life. And I see people deciding, I'm gonna go in a different direction. People that felt the burn of Trump with his grifting and you know, buy this gold coin, which is worth zero, or join this college, or go to this event, or whatever, um, and just spending good money after nothing. It almost feels like we almost get our wish come true. We do. We get our wish come true. There's a lot of there's a lot of thought and there's a lot of planning going into this election, more so than ever. I think the last presidential election was a little bit helter skelter in the sense of not knowing if um, if Biden was even going to win. There was so much people trying to interfere in our election, and I think other countries are looking at that with some type of plan. But I don't see that happening. I don't see that they can get in and make that happen. Um, 
I see us offering this sort of loving cup to people or talking to them about the person that you want to vote for. I see us having this sense of wisdom that says, let me put this hate against this party or that party, that's Odin, to the side and let me think with my full mind and let me sit and receive and hear what they have to say so they can understand what I have to say. I see a lot of fast action and moving. Will their people still be under the sub the deception of some of the Republican candidates? Absolutely. Absolutely. There will still be dishonesty. There will still be people trying to make an attempt to tap into our election. But ultimately, they will be found. They will be shown. It's something they do they want to do in the dark, so to speak, you know, or behind the scenes or underground or putting out a lot of propaganda about this party and that party so we can vote in a way that they want us to go so they can manipulate our country the way they want it to be. But I see them being exposed. I do. I see it down to almost we have to battle these people to get them back but we also have to almost battle ourselves. And what I mean by that is really thinking with a critical mind on who we want to put in office and who we want in terms of leadership. You can see what happened when you have some people that appear to be lunatics thinking they're the right thing, doing the right thing, and they want to tear the whole government down. And had they did that, what would, what would, what would they do then? What was the plan past that? There wasn't one. So that doesn't work. So we have to stand for our country. We have to stand for democracy. That is who we are at the end of the day. Whether you came here from another country and you were made a citizen or you were born in this country, it's a country that belongs to all of us. Nobody is better than anybody. Our ancestors played significant roles to create this country. Um, and so we should stand on the shoulders of that with pride rather than always bashing our situation. You ever have a friend, a girl or a guy, friend, adult, uh, who's in this marriage and their husband or wife seem fine to you, but all they do is bad mouth that situation. They bad mouth it, bad, bad mouth it, bad mouth it. And then the next thing you know, that person in that marriage that they're bad mouthing decides to up and leave. And now here they are shattered and shocked and in tears and wondering why I didn't do anything. You bad mouth the situation. You put that negative out, the energy out there so tough. That person knew that they were not wanted by you or they felt they weren't wanted by you rather than offering them love and kindness and forgiveness. It's very tempting for us to hate a party, a political party, and those people that occupy space in that political party. And yet here we are. We're sharing this planet together. Um, I don't think in my wildest dream that we are supposed to be here struggling and fighting and, and uh, demeaning, name calling, fighting, disrespecting one another. Because that's the way we send the country into self-destruction. People are always worrying about nuclear bomb, nuclear war, whatever. We can implode on our own selves. What do you mean? Nobody has to come in here and do that. And then here we are. We are supposed to be uh, the role model of all the country. That what could happen if gentlemen sit down together and create a constitution that we all agree to and all of that. We're supposed to be that place. And yet... We fight like a horrible marriage, a horrible marriage that oftentimes you're even the kids want y'all to divorce in that out of that marriage. Instead of tearing it down, we should be lifting it up. Instead of separating and and all that, we should be coming together. And yes, I know I make videos and I make silly videos and I make predictions and I'll continue to do that because I'm always curious. But at the same time, we have to think bigger. We have to dream better, bigger. We have to think about what do we want to leave behind for our children, our legacy? What are we going to leave behind for them? 
a country in shambles, a country divided, or are we going to shift? This is a mental, emotional, spiritual shift that sees us coming together and unified, not tearing each other down. We are supposed to have this strength in this country that we pass on to those coming up behind us so that they know that you were here, that you left some type of a mark that's a positive mark. You don't want to be always the spectator who, when we look at those pictures, like you see those pictures and you have those people down south that were hanging uh, slaves and all the enslaved people. And then you're looking at the whole audience and they're pointing at the pictures and, and they're looking and you're wondering, you didn't do anything? You didn't say anything? You just were a spectator there? Yeah, I, I, will, I refuse to be that. If nobody watches my video, this video, at least I said what I needed to say. We have to come together. We have to shift to where we bring love back relevant again. It's almost crazy that we don't love the main person we supposed to love ourselves. That's And you hear that all the time. And it's so much easier than you think. It just is, I'm flawed. I'm not perfect. I'm human, but I'm enjoying the hell out of this lifetime. I'm enjoying the food I eat and the glass of wine I drink or the can of beer or the soda pop or uh, the steak I may have or the lobster I might eat or the cruise I might go on or wherever and enjoying this life in a great deal and put down our barriers because ever since Trump has been office, people are almost afraid to speak to each other, you know, to say hi to your neighbor or, you know, anything. You barely want to bump into anybody in the grocery store. Um, I noticed, you know, and this is I, obviously some of it is COVID, but even pre-COVID, what I've noticed um, is when I'm in the grocery store, and someone is walking by me or something like that and they almost bump into me and they move and they do this big apology and i'm just like no problem no problem i don't it's fine <laughs> it's fine we've got to come off of this fear of one another because that's what that is it's a fear of one another and what i might do or what they might do uh that judging of one another is so easy the easiest thing to do is to hate and to judge because our mind works like that. It puts everything in categories and it makes us feel comfortable if I can say you're this race and you're that race and you're ghetto and you're poor white trash and you're stuck up and you're this and you're that rather than saying we're human and we're all flawed. The people with, with money, the number one they think, worry about is money. The people that are impoverished, they worry about money. Mm -hmm. Girls that are skinny, I worry about being too skinny. Girls that are thick, worry about being too big. Yeah. Women that are more mature, worry about getting old. Girls that are young, want to be old. <laughs> it's crazy. You have to laugh to keep from crying from it. But I would like to see everybody shift. I'd like everybody to embrace that blue wave that's coming. It's going to come again. Um, and partly that's the Supreme Court has really helped in that sense of making these outlandish uh, uh, decisions that pushes everybody in that direction. So you guys keep on doing what you're doing because you're pushing everybody to the blue, if that blue is better. Um, at the end of the day, it's really about what is it I need in my life to make me feel fulfilled? What do I need in my life to make me happy? Do I need friends? Do I need to take a class? Do I need to, to knit, sew, paint, listen to music, dance like nobody's around? Dance in your home, kick your heels up? Do I need a massage and a chiropractor? What do I need? Taking care of you is primary to anything else above all else. And when you shift and you're going to know that. You're going to know that. You're going to be like, eh, no, I don't want to do a bunch of phone calls. I will not. I don't do a lot of phone calling. If someone's calling me too much, I, I kind of back back. I like my privacy. I love my alone time. I love to read. I love to make videos. I love to write. I love to teach. 
those are all individual things besides what I do with my family. And I have a great supportive family. We have our ups and downs. Please trust me, we do. But we weather through it. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. Um, it's just a conversation. Anyways, have a great night, guys. Bye now.